Man, the title of my sermon tonight is Reprobate Kanye West. Reprobate Amen. Kanye West. Now, I mentioned this briefly in my sermon this morning, and I wasn't prepared with all the facts or the information. It was just different things that I'd heard, little bits here and there. And I hate to bring something up without doing the proper research and understanding. And I was hoping that the crowd was going to help me out a little bit. Of course, everybody came up to me after the sermon helping me out. But nobody wanted to help me while I was up here uh, when I needed the help. Just kidding. But anyway, I did the research. I'm going to preach this tonight. And, and this issue that I'm preaching on of Kanye West and his so-called conversion to Christianity, let me tell you something. This shows the spiritual state that our country is in and the spiritual state that churches are in, that they are hailing this as a good thing. And, oh, isn't it so wonderful? What a blessing. And you're seeing all the Calvinists, especially, just coming unglued for Kanye West. Okay? Cuckoo for Kanye is what they are. And the thing, you know, these people have lost the plot, my friend. Okay? You've got these fake Calvinist trendy, hipster, reform types that are all excited about this because Kanye's new pastor is a graduate from John MacArthur's Bible College and these guys have the wrong Bible. They've got Lordship Salvation, which is the wrong salvation. John MacArthur is like the biggest pusher and proponent of the false Lordship Salvation, the wrong gospel. He wrote whole books about it Okay, he's the arch enemy of actual salvation by faith in Jesus Christ alone. He's not preaching a King James Bible. He's a false teacher. By the way, John MacArthur said that you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved. John MacArthur said that it's not the blood of Christ that saves us. The blood of Christ just went into the ground. His actual blood didn't mean anything. When it says blood, it just means his death. Just like a euphemism for dead. That's garbage. We're washed in the blood yeah. if you're actually reading a King James Version. But I digress. These people that are getting excited about this are showing that they have no spiritual discernment. I'm going to give you the facts tonight, and you be the judge, my friend, because we need someone to call this out for the fraud and the sham that it is, this so-called conversion of Kanye West. But you say, Pastor, you don't know his heart. How can you look inside Kanye West's heart and see whether he's actually safe? Well, here's the thing about that. We actually can look inside Kanye West's heart. If you would, turn your Bible to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. And let's see if we can take a look into Kanye West's heart tonight. While you're turning there, I'll read for you from Matthew 12, 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Right. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Look at Luke 6, 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. This is what the Bible says. Yes, we can see what's in someone's heart by examining what comes out of their mouth. Because what comes out of their mouth is indicative of what is in their heart. The evil man brings forth evil things. The good man brings forth good things. Out of the treasure and abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Okay, go if you would to 2 Peter Chapter 2, the Bible warns us about people that will pretend to be Christian that aren't, that will infiltrate Christianity. Over and over again, we have warnings. 2 Peter chapter 2 is one such warning. It says in verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction." And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Watch this. This is the key. And through covetousness shall they with feigned, feigned means that they're fake, feigned words make merchandise of you. 
whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Jump down to verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, an heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozor, who loved the, way, the wages excuse me, of unrighteousness. Folks, what is the Bible telling us is the motive for many of these false prophets or infiltrators? He said, they will make merchandise of you. They have a heart exercised with covetous practices, and they love the wages of unrighteousness. They're in it for the money, and that's exactly what's going on with this lying devil, Kanye West. Kanye West is as wicked as hell tonight. I didn't say he used to be as wicked as hell. I said he's as wicked as hell right now. And let me explain to you why. Okay, now let's back up and let's start in the past with Kanye West and let's follow his history and come to his present day so-called conversion. Well, back in 2006, he was pictured on the front of Rolling Stone magazine wearing the crown of thorns as a messianic figure, and it said the passion of Kanye West. Okay. Fast forward to the year 2013, he comes out with an album called Jesus, which is blasphemously just made to sound like Jesus, like he's a, another Jesus or something. Jesus. Right. Track three, I'm going to read you the lyrics. Now, look, a lot of the lyrics that I would love to read to you, I can't because they're so bad. I can't even read them out loud. They're so filthy. So I'm going to read you that which can be read publicly without, you know, uh, defiling anyone. Okay, this is from track number three on his 2013 album, Yeezus. The track is called, I Am a God. Capital G, God. I'm a God. Let me read for you the lyrics from his song, I'm a God. I'm a God. Hurry up with my damn message. Hurry up with my damn menage. Get the Porsche out the damn garage. I'm a God, even though I'm a man of God, my whole life in the hand of God, so y'all better quit playing with God. He's basically saying, you mess with me, you're messing with God, because I am a God, capital G. I just talked to Jesus. He said, what's up, Jesus? I said, beep, I'm chilling, trying to stack these millions. I know he the most high, but I'm a close high. Wow. Now go if you would to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. We're examining the character tonight of Kanye West. She said, oh, it was back then. Oh, we'll get to the present day because this guy hasn't changed at all. And I'm going to prove that to you from the words out of his own mouth that he hasn't changed at all. Same blasphemous, wicked devil. Did you hear what he said? Well, I know he's the most high, but I'm the close high. Like, basically what he's trying to say is, well, there's God, and then I'm like right there with God, as God. He's Jesus, and I'm Jesus, and I'm a God too. This is horrible stuff. Right. Isaiah 14, 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Kanye? No, I'm just kidding. How art thou fallen from You know, there's so much dispute about this word from the Hebrew, you know, so. No, I'm just kidding. You know, uh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Isn't that what he's saying? Well, I know you're the most high, but I'm the close high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So he did an interview where he explained his lyrics. You know, he's questioned about this song, I am a God, and these lyrics where he's setting himself up as God and as another Jesus, an antichrist, as it were. Here's what he said to explain it. When someone comes along and says something like, I'm a God, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you, that's who I think I am, a God. Well, that clears that up. <laughs> okay, here's, here is the lyric of his song, No Church in the Wild. This is Kanye West and Jay-Z, No Church in the Wild. 
Jesus was a carpenter, Yeezy laid beats. Hova flow the Holy Ghost, get the hell up out your seats, preach. Now, what does he mean when he says, Hova flow the Holy Ghost? You know what this is talking about? Jay-Z, yeah. another wicked rap artist, yeah. you know what he calls himself? Jehova. Right. He calls himself Jehovah, again, making himself to be God. And by the way, these are not the only rap artists who think they're God. You remember the old dirty Bizza when he changed his name to Jesus Christ? Some other phony rap artist changed his name to Christ Bearer and then mutilated himself and jumped out a window, demon possessed? Folks, these people are crazy, yeah. evil, blasphemous, demonic people right. claiming to be God, claiming to be Jesus, calling themselves Jehovah, calling themselves Jesus, all these horrible things. And here's what they also say in the same lyrics. We formed a new religion. No sins as long as there's permission. Okay, wonderful, isn't it? So we fast forward to now. So we, you can see the kind of stuff that this guy was saying with all this blasphemy and stuff. And of course, there's the infamous uh, Book of Kanye, or Book of Jesus, rather. There was a book that came out called The Book of Jesus. Now, you know, disclaimer, he didn't actually write that book or have anything to do with that book, but someone published... Uh, basically a portion of the Bible where they've taken all the references to God out and replaced it with Kanye or Jesus. So it literally says, in the beginning, Kanye created the heaven and the earth. And it comes a little black, leather-bound, you know, with gold around the edges like a Bible. But, and you say, well, you had nothing to do with that. Right, but it was based off his album where he's claiming to be God and claiming to be Jesus. Yeah. That's where the idea for that book came from. And I don't see him condemning that. I don't see him getting angry about that or upset. Uh, this guy is a weird... But now, oh, but now he's, he's saved now, according to the Calvinists, okay? He's saved now. You know, supposedly in the last year or so, he has gotten saved. And, he, and he's come out and said, I'm not going to do any more secular music. It's all gospel. So he, what he's doing now is he's having Sunday services. He didn't go join a church and sit down and shut up and learn something. But rather, he started his own quasi-church, if you can even call it that. But he started this thing called Sunday Service. It's just this wild partying music where they sing like secular pop songs, but they just substitute in religious lyrics, substitute in about God and Jesus. They're singing Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, Come As You Are by Nirvana, Don't Speak by No Doubt. I guess they're just reaching out to that early 90s, you know, crowd. Yeah, everybody who's our age, you know, everybody who's in their late 30s. So they're doing all these pop songs, and then they're doing all of his old blasphemous, filthy, evil songs, just with the lyrics cleaned up and whatever. And this is their Sunday services. So they did this for months and months and months. No preaching, no Bible, just songs. Just, and it's all just, woo! I mean, if you look, it's just a wild party and singing and music. This is their Sunday services, okay? For the past year, let me read for you uh, from this article from the Christian Post. For the past year, West has been leading a church, but not a church in either the conventional or biblical sense. West's church called Sunday Service is more like an exclusive feel-good music extravaganza for Hollywood elites. Yeah, that sounds like the church that Christ founded, right? Where you're supposed to treat everybody equally regardless of how much money they have and how wicked it is if somebody comes in with a gold ring and goodly apparel and you treat them better than the poor man in vile raiment. Remember how the Bible said that that was wicked? In the book of James? No, 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 this is an elite group where it's invitation only to come to his church service, where it's an extravaganza for Hollywood elites. Those who have attended the events, which have been held in various locations, include Brad Pitt. Yeah, this is who you want to worship with on Sunday. Justin Bieber, David Letterman, Katy Perry, the lesbian, and Chance the Rapper. West's wife, Kim Kardashian, called the weekly invite-only events a healing experience. But she readily admitted in April to late-night host Jimmy Kimmel that Sunday service is Christianity light. There's no praying. There's no sermon. There's no word. It's just music 
and it's just a feeling. Boy, this sounds like the gospel, huh? This sounds like real salvation, real Christianity, huh? You, got, you can be real proud over there, John MacArthur and friends. It's definitely something he believes in. This is what his wife, Kim Kardashian, is saying. Our new spiritual, godly role model of a wife. It's definitely something he believes in. Jesus, and there's a Christian vibe, but there's no preaching. It's just a very spiritual Christian experience, she said. Although Sunday service is exclusive, people can see a glimpse of the songs. Oh, joy, we're so lucky. Posted on social media every week. Many of Kardashian West's clips feature her daughter, Northwest. Well, that was a fun name. Let's name her North. The name's North. Northwest. <laughs> Dancing to the music. Now, here's what's so sick about this. You want to know what's so sick about this? Sunday service. And I'll get to the recent development where now they're bringing in this, this MacArthur preacher. You want to know the first time that he mentioned this term Sunday service? Because he started this so-called quasi sort of not a church, okay? And he calls it Sunday service. Well, he was already mentioning Sunday service back in 2012. Here's what you have to understand about Kanye West. From the very beginnings of his career, he's been talking about Jesus all the time. He's been singing about Jesus all the time. He had a super famous song called Jesus Walks. All these blasphemous, stupid Jesus songs have gone back all the way. Folks, he's taking God's name in vain is what he's doing if he even utters the name of Jesus or God. And I'll prove that. I'll get to that later. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got a lot of notes here, okay? I had a busy afternoon. But <laughs> listen to this. Back in 2012, he was already talking about Sunday service. In his song, New God Flow. So here are the lyrics from his song, New God Flow. Shake that body, party that body, come and have a good time with G-O-D. This is great stuff, right? I believe there's a God above me. I'm just the God of everything else. I put holes in everything else. New God Flow, F everything else. Supreme Dope Dealer, woo! Write it in bold letters. This is great stuff, huh? Real godly stuff here about the Lord. Shake that body. Party that body. It's a new God flow, niggas. Come and have a good time with G-O-D. Welcome to Sunday service. Are you listening? So he's already talking about Sunday service back in his new God flow. Welcome to Sunday service. And this is the key, folks. Don't miss this lyric. Welcome to Sunday service if you hope to someday serve us. Folks, he's already predicting the year 2019 where he says, hey, come to Sunday service if you hope to someday, like seven years from now or, you know, <laughs> right, 2019, if you hope to someday serve us. Yeah, there's a God above me, but I'm the God, capital G, of everything else. We got green in our eyes. Just follow my Eric sermon. Did Moses not part the water with the cane? Did strippers not make an ark when I made it rain? So God made it rain on Noah's ark, and Kanye West made it rain with money for strippers. So he's God because he rained money on strippers. This is blasphemous filth and garbage. And you know, I'd like to see the interview where Kanye West says, please stop buying all my old music. Please destroy all those old wicked CDs. Please never listen to my old music again. No, I'm sure he's enjoying that fat check every week from this filth, from this smut. And then, folks, this is the stuff I can read from the pulpit. Keep that in mind. Did Yeezy not get signed by Hove and Dame? Remember who Hove is? Some other filthy artist calling himself Jehovah. Okay, by the way, his name alone is Jehovah. And ran to Jacob and made the new Jesus chains? In Jesus' name, let the choir say, I'm on fire, that's what Richard Pryor say, and will annihilate anybody that violate. Ask any dope boy you know, they admire ye. Ye is Jesus himself. Okay. So, 
here's an article that was on vice.com about his new Sunday service. Now we're jumping forward back to the present again about Sunday service. Remember, we brought it up back in his song, New God Flows, a really righteous song, right? In a Jimmy Kimmel clip, this is from vice.com, Kimmel asked Kardashian West if people at Sunday service worshipped Kanye or God. The audience laughed, but the question seemed genuine. He wasn't kidding. He wants to know, are you worshiping God or are you worshiping Kanye? It feels like Kanye himself is the center and the object of this worship. Keep in mind, this is not a Christian website. This is not a fundamentalist Baptist website. This is just a secular website, vice.com. They're calling this out. Listen to what they say in their article. Kanye was supposed to be a Coachella headliner, but plans fell apart when the festival wouldn't erect a giant dome in monument to the rapper in his church. They had conceded to building him a hill for an Easter Sunday service. He, he said he can go in the high places, apparently. He had a date waiting for us, he told his congregation. We can imagine that he does not refer to a Coachella executive. On Sunday morning, Coachella pilgrims made their way out to the little green mountain outside of the festival campground to partake in Easter services Yeezy style, buying $225 sweatshirts reading Holy Spirit out of a church clothes tent along the way. So here he sets up in Coachella, California, which is not too far. Isn't that only like four hours? Isn't that like Palm Springs or Indio? So four hours from here out in the desert, he's going to have this big old Easter service because he loves the Lord, because he loves the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because he's saved now. So he fights with the promoters about building him some giant dome. Eventually they build him a giant hill. He goes on the hill, but on your way to the hill, you stop at the gift shop where they sell church clothes and it's a $225 sweatshirt that says the Holy Spirit on it. Oh yeah, this guy really loves Christ. No, he loves money and the love of money is the root of all evil. Who sells a sweatshirt that says Holy Spirit for $225? $180 pair of pants that say Sunday services. They are making merchandise right. of God's people. Right. That's all this is about. Right. And I will prove it to you in this sermon right. that that is all that it's about. Right. Let's keep going. Keep in mind, I'm still reading the vice.com article. $225 sweatshirts reading Holy Spirit out of a church clothes tent along the way. Here again, Kanye was ironically modeling the most damning parts of Scripture. A few people referenced Matthew 21, 12, 13 in response to images of the merch. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said to them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. This is the article quoting scripture rebuking Kanye West and Calvinists are too stupid to do the same thing. Amen. Now look, I'm not saying that all Calvinists are falling for this. I'm not saying that all Calvinists aren't saved. But I'm saying that the bulk and majority of today's Calvinists are these ESV toting, liberal, tattooed, drunks, and derelicts, and these wicked, liberal, worldly, godless, lordship, salvation, preaching, heretic devils that are going to split hell wide open. And look, I'm against Calvinism. I'm totally against their predestination doctrine. It's false. It's an enemy of soul winning. I don't believe that they're all unsaved because I have met some Calvinists that do believe the right gospel and that even have a King James version of the Bible. But I'm telling you something, the majority of this Reformed Baptist crowd is a lordship salvation, heresy preaching, drunken tattoo ESV fest. Nuts to it. And they're, oh, Kanye West. Look, I posted on Facebook, hey, I'm preaching this sermon against Kanye West and had some of these Calvinist bozos already coming on there. You're such a jerk. And why don't we give, and here's what they say. Oh, let's just give him some time and let's see how he pans out. I guess they're waiting for him to persevere to the end or whatever. <laughs> Folks, how can he persevere to the end? He hasn't even started yet. You got to start before you can endure or persevere. He's not even saved. I'll get to that. Back to the article. Look, the article was quoting Matthew 21. The article said, here's the scripture he's violating by setting up an Easter church service and then had selling this, and at 225 bucks? 
Unbelievable. Here's the, okay, back to the worldly article. He's just a dude playing church, and the public is watching for entertainment, not enrichment. Kanye's ministry is really just about Kanye. Sunday service is designed for him. He is both the seeker and the redeemed, both the one who needs saving and the one who will save. It's a church of one with invitation to watch but never truly join. That's a worldly article calling this out for what it is. Okay, let's get into the lyrics from his new album that just came out a few days ago. So he just came out with his first gospel album. It's called Jesus is King. Okay, and so, you know, from now he's doing only gospel music. So let's get some of the wonderful lyrics from his new album, Jesus King, because he's totally different now. I mean, now he's a new creature in Christ. You know, you can't bring up those old lyrics. Okay, first of all, let me just read you some stupid lyrics, first of all. Okay. And folks, the reason I read this is because this is what makes a mockery of the things of God. Right. By reason of these bozos, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Right. Preach it. Here's some lyrics from his new album. Closed on Sunday, you're my Chick-fil-A. Closed on Sunday, you my Chick-fil-A. You're my number one with the lemonade. Raise our sons, train them in the faith. Really? He's singing praise to Chick-fil-A. He's just, oh, what's he trying to do? Just suck up to all the little Fox News, Baptist, neocon, Republican, Trump-supporting idiots and take their money. That's what this is about. Chick-fil-A, give me a break. Everyone knows Raising Cane's is better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's what my kids, that's what they always say. I, I don't eat either one of them. I don't even like either one of them. I'm a Chipotle man myself. Don't tell me about them supporting fags. I don't want to know about it, all right? Just I'm not listening. All right, so listen to this. There's a whole song on the album that's just dedicated to taking God's name in vain. Okay? So here's the title of the song, On God. Now look, if you're my age, you know this expression probably, because when I was a kid, everybody was saying this expression, and even back then as a child, I was horrified by it, and I would cringe every time I heard it. But people would say, on God. Who knows what I'm talking about? And lots of people, yeah. What it, what it means is, I swear to God, is what that means, okay? On God. So you'd, you'd say, no, that didn't really happen. They'd say, hey, on God. Or sometimes you'd hear them say, like, on my mom or on my grandma or on whatever. But, but the bit, you know, on God. Or, you know, Tyler Baker on everything, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so I looked up. I looked this up on Urban Dictionary because someone was a little skeptical about whether that's what on God actually meant. Well, I looked up on Urban Dictionary. There were nine entries on Urban Dictionary, and all nine of them, every single one of them said, on God means I swear to God, or on God means when somebody says something and somebody doesn't believe it, then they say on God to say I swear by God. So, so first of all, it's God's name in vain to use that expression. You're taking God's name in vain, and you're violating Christ's clear command to swear not at all. Right. James chapter 5, above all things, my brethren, swear not. Okay. But listen to the horrible lyrics from this song, where he reveals what's actually in his heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. How you get so much favor on your side? Accept him as your Lord and Savior, I replied. Thou shalt love thy neighbor, not divide. I'm a ride. That's on God. The devil had my soul. I can't lie. Life going to have some lows and some highs. Before the Grammys ever gave a nod, I wore my heart on my sleeve. I couldn't hide. In 03, they told me not to drive. I bleached my hair for every time I could have died. But I survived. That's on God. I've been telling y'all since 05, the greatest artist Resting or alive. That's on L.A. Reed. That's on Clive. That's no jive. That's on God. Listen to what he says there. He says that he says, I am the greatest artist, resting or alive. That is on God. So he's swearing by the name of God that he is the greatest artist, dead or alive. Well, it's a, a totally new man. 
super blasphemous, right. super prideful, super arrogant, and evil, and taking God's name in vain. You know, last time I checked, Psalm 139 said, Thy enemies take thy name in vain. I think I remember singing a song like that. An actual good song. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Sunday services, folk! And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Woo! Do not, I hate them. All right, that's enough. Cut. All right. But listen to this. Let's see. Let, let's see. Here, this is from 2018. And it's not like there's some certain date that's his road to Damascus experience. Like I said, he's already been talking about Jesus all along and everything. So I don't know when he's claiming to have actually converted. Sometime in 2018, 2019, whatever. Okay. But listen to this quote from 2018. And let's see if it matches his album lyric that just came out a couple days ago. Okay. Here's the quote. I'm in Africa recording. The music is the best on the planet. I am the best living recording artist. We, rather, because the spirits flow through me. The spirit of Fela, the spirit of Marley, the spirit of Tupac flows through me. We know who the best, we know. 2018, I'm the best recording artist alive. Oh, I shouldn't say I, we, because I'm channeling all these other <laughs> departed spirits and so we know who the best, we know, you know, legion, for we are many. That's 2018. You say, oh, but no, yeah, that was before, I must have just been like early 2018. You know, I must have been before he got saved. Okay, then why is he still saying, well, I've been telling you since 05, I'm the greatest artist alive. Instead of saying, man, I'm sorry I made those demonic, horrible statements, and I'm sorry that I was so prideful and arrogant and wicked. No, it's, I, I've been telling you since 05 that I'm the best alive. And you know what? I am the best alive, and that's on God. So what's God to him? God is something that he uses to elevate self. God is a word that he invokes to say that he is the greatest person on the planet. That's on his new Christian album that idiot Fool Christians are going to put in their meal. Oh, yeah, good God. Shut that crap off and listen to some real hymns. Amen. Listen to this garbage. It's wicked. Amen. That's no jive. That's on God. Off the 350s, he supplied. The IRS want the 50 plus our tithe. Well, that part's actually true, but. <laughs> All right, he's right about. No, I'm just kidding. But listen to this. Man, that's over half of the pie. I felt dry. That's on God. That's why I charge the prices that I charge. I can't be out here dancing with the stars. No, I cannot let my family starve. I go hard. That's on God. So I guess Northwest and Kim Kardashian are going to starve if he doesn't charge $225 for a sweatshirt that says Holy Spirit on it, folks. This is the new Kanye West. And you know what? He is Balaam, the son of Bosor. He is Cain West. He is Balaam. He is of the devil. He is just as wicked and godless. And it's all about the money yeah. out of his own mouth. Right. Well, that's why, you know, I got to charge these prices, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he's really hard up for money. He's still making money off his old songs like I'm a God and New God Flow and all those, right? Those wonderful classics. Here's some new, uh, here's some other lyrics from his new album. What if Eve made apple juice? You go and do what Adam do? Or say, baby, let's put this back on the tree because we have everything we need. Ooh, 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 oh. <laughs> Folks, this is blasphemy. Do you know what blasphemy means? I mean, look, blasphemy is when we take that which is holy and sacred and we trample it and drag it down and Jesus is my homeboy and all this junk. No, hallowed be his name. Amen. And we don't make light of biblical stories. Oh, man, what if he made apple juice? It was, shut up, Amen. weirdo. Here's another lyric from the same song. Jesus, give us strength. Jesus, make us well. Jesus, help us live. Jesus, give us wealth. Is that what the Bible says? Jesus, give us wealth? Nope. You know, the prayer that God taught in the Bible is, give me not riches. He said, give me neither poverty nor riches. Amen. 
lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Isn't that what the Bible says? Yep. Proverbs chapter 30. But if I tried to lead you to Jesus, we get called halfway believers. Only halfway read Ephesians. Only if they knew that I knew, only if they knew what I knew. So he's like, well, I read half Ephesians, but man, if these Christians only knew what I knew. <laughs> so knowledgeable, right? I was never new till I knew of true and living God, Yeshua, the true and living God. Oh, and here's my favorite title of a song on his new Christian album, Use This Gospel. Folks, people say what's in their heart. Use this gospel. That's what he's doing, friends. He's using the gospel for his own glorification and his own financial gain. And here are the lyrics from that song. Use this gospel for protection. It's a hard road to heaven. Wow. I thought it was easy to get to heaven. I mean, I, I thought Jesus did the hard. I thought it was a hard road when Jesus picked up the cross and carried it all the way from Jerusalem to Golgotha. Right. I thought that was the hard road. Amen. I didn't know that getting saved was so hard. But don't worry, because while he worked on this new album, he asked for all his collaborators, while they worked on his new album, to abstain from premarital, what, you, know, you know what, while they're actually working on the album with him as a form of fasting. So all of his wicked devil rap artist affiliates, he's like, hey, while you guys work on this album, just abstain from fornication, just, you know, like you're fasting. Folks, that's not fasting, that's life for life. God's people. Is that, what, is that what the Bible says? Like, hey, let's make gospel music together, you fornicating whore. Hey, you slut. Hey, you whore. Why don't we make some music together? But can you just not be a complete whore for the couple days while we actually cut the track? Can you not be a complete whoremonger for the couple of days while we actually cut the track? No, the Bible says if someone's called a brother and they're fornicating, we're not even supposed to eat with that person. Right. And how can we be unequally yoked together with unbelievers and produce gospel music with the scum of the earth? And these rap artists are the scum of the earth. There I said it. Preach it. Ah, you're a racist. Shut up, you fool. Right. I don't care if they're white like Eminem. Right. He's an idiot too. Yeah. The Beastie Boys are idiots too. It's nothing to do with the color of their skin. It's the music. Yeah. Ah, you're racist. And that's what this Kanye West, he just, all he's doing is just race baiting constantly. And even his new Christian album is, is just like whining about being black. Why don't you get over the fact that you're black, okay? Get over it. White, red, yellow, black, who cares? We're sick of it. It's 2019. It's America. Move on. Losers hide behind that yeah. when they live in the land of opportunity and any black person could even be the president of the United States as long as they're half white, okay? <laughs> but I'm saying in 2019, every opportunity is open to black people. You quit whining about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to Kanye's Sunday services. So... You know, remember, it's no preaching, no word, no prayers, just all music. Well, now he started to bring in a pastor to give some sermonettes. Not a sermon, but a sermonette for Christianettes. Okay. And so Pastor Adam Tyson from Placerita Bible Church, graduate of the Bastards Seminary, I'm sorry, the Master's Seminary, in uh, uh, Santa Clarita, California, John MacArthur, famous for denying the blood of Christ, teaching that you can be saved and still take the mark of the beast, write whole books on lordship, salvation, etc. Promoter of the ESV and false versions, false gospel, false doctrine. So I went to Pastor Adam Tyson's uh, website because this is Kanye says this is my pastor. I'm sure he, he doesn't darken the door of the church. Because he's got his own little thing going on. But he invites his pastor to come and give a little sermonette at his gig. So I went to this pastor, because this is Kanye's pastor, right? And people are saying, well, he's going to a doctrinally sound church. Really? Here's the plan of salvation. I went to the plan of salvation on this Pastor Adam Tyson's website. And, you know, he explains the basic, some of the basic things you'd expect to find in a plan of salvation. But then at the end, the last paragraph says you, basically where he tells you, like, this is what you need to do to be saved, okay? Here's what you need to do to be saved. He said, the gospel, 
This is the last paragraph of what you need to do to be saved. The gospel is a demand on your life to confess and repent from your sin and to turn in faith to Christ who can save you. True faith is always accompanied by repentance. Repentance is agreeing with God that you are sinful, confessing your sin to him, and then making a choice to turn from your sin to pursue Christ who offers you eternal life. It's not enough to only believe facts about Christ. The Bible says that even Satan and the demons believe in God, but they don't love God or obey him. Evidence of true saving faith and obedience to God that results from loving him because he first loved us. So notice what he says. Hey, the devil's believe, but they don't obey or love God. You have to obey and love God to be saved. Did you hear that? You have to make this decision to turn from your sins. So let's, let, let, me, let me just go over this again, okay? The gospel is a demand on your life. Really? I don't remember, you know, 1 Corinthians 15 explaining it quite like that. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I receive, which is a demand on your life. It is a demand that you make a decision to turn from your sin and pursue after Christ and obey Him. That's called work salvation. Amen. In case anybody's not paying attention, okay? Listen, you know, you got to agree with God that you're sinful, confess your sin to him, and then make a choice to turn from your sin to pursue Christ. Okay, Brother Charles, will you represent Christ for a moment? Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. So, so okay, I want to be saved. So I go to this Pastor Adam Tyson's website, right? And I, re okay, I got to turn, you know, here's my sin over here. Woo, you know, okay. I, I got to turn from my sin. I got to pursue Christ. Okay, I want you to run away from me. Go. All right. Keep going. Faster, faster. All right, look, faster. This is, this is salvation, according to Adam Tyson. All right, I'm, out. I'm pursuing Christ. All right, all right. Maybe someday, I don't know. I mean, if, I don't know if I can endure to the end. I'm getting out of breath. You know, can I endure? I got to endure. Oh, 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 I almost, oh, I, <laughs> What kind of ridiculous plan of salvation says that you get saved by pursuing Christ? Pursue Christ and thou shalt be saved. Chase him down and thou shalt be saved. Run him down and thou shalt be saved. Run a marathon after Christ. If you endure, you'll be saved. That is work salvation at its finest. Lordship, well, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree since he's coming out of John MacArthur's college. This is Kanye's pastor. Is, the pa is his pastor saved? Last time I checked, the disciple's not above his master, nor the right. servant above his Lord. Right. And last time I checked, an evil tree produces corrupt fruit. Right. From their statement of faith, we believe that repentance is a gift of God that he grants to all those whom he has called out of darkness and into light. Repentance is heartfelt sorrowing, resulting in confessing sin and then a complete turning to God. Repentance involves a sincere commitment to forsake all known sin and to walk in total obedience to Christ. Wow. That's what this guy is saying is required for salvation. Did you hear that? Hardcore. This is hardcore. I mean, you have to forsake all known sin and walk in total obedience to Christ. But then this guy turns around and says, Kanye is saved. So I guess according to him, Kanye has turned from all known sin and is walking in total obedience to Christ. But that's why they're like, well, we got to wait and see. It might take a little time to get into total obedience. It's work salvation is what it is. Right. Oh, it's the doctrines of grace. Pfft. Yeah, right. It's the doctrines of race. Chasing after Jesus. Trying to catch up with him. Trying to pursue him. Follow him with a lifestyle of obedience. Repentance is a full understanding that sin is wrong and an emotional approval to what the Bible teaches about sin. If you're not, according to this guy, you have to get emotional about it. Wow. You can't just be like an Indian or something, like Cochise. You can't just be like, you know, me believe in Jesus. You have to be like, you have to be like, I'm so sorry, God. <laughs> you, can't just, you can't just believe in Jesus. You know, the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know what the Bible said? Take the water of life freely. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst. Amen. You eat of the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. I'm the door. If any man enter in by me, he shall be saved. Amen. Folks, it's easy to be saved. Amen. Whosoever believeth in him. It's not works. Right. 
It's not works, the same man should boast, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose, sins are for, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. It's not works. It's not turning. For, turning from your sin is hard work that we do every day. <clears throat> but we don't have to do to be saved. Given his ongoing Sunday service events and vow to move away from making secular music in favor of creating only gospel music, West fully committing to his faith by becoming a Christian convert falls in line with his recent exploits. Kanye's pastor, Adam Tyson, hinted at this new direction by revealing how West reacts to people cursing in his presence. If somebody cusses in his presence, I've heard him say a couple times, Hey man, you can't cuss when you're with me. I'm a born-again Christian. <laughs> Tyson said on the Pure Flicks podcast, I mean... Who's going to say that if they're not meaning that they want Christ to be exalted in all that they do? Are you listening to this pastor? A little different than his statement of faith. A little different than the plan of salvation on his website. Plan of salvation on his website is like, you better turn from every known sin. You better hate sin. Now it's just like, dude, Kanye is offended by cussing now. I mean, who would do that if they were really saved? The proof that Kanye West is saved, according to his pastor, I mean, I heard him tell somebody not to cuss. <laughs> this is a misguided sermon. He's clearly saved. <sighs> oh, bastard. Oh, excuse me. Right? All the cuss words that are in the Bible, like bastard and piss, damn, hell, those are all in the Bible. Sorry, Tipper Gore and Kanye West. <laughs> now, obviously, there are other obscene things that we should never say. Don't get me wrong. But here's what the Bible says here. Okay. Or not what the Bible says. Sorry. This is what my notes about this bozo say. We'll get to the Bible in a moment. From now on, he told me, he told me that from now on, all I want to do is serve Christ. I want every song I sing to have part of my testimony, to include the gospel. So he said, I want every song I sing to include the gospel. Folks, I read the lyrics to every song on his new album. None of them even comes close to presenting the gospel. None of them even come close. There's one where he chants Jesus is Lord over and over again. Every knee shall bow, Jesus is Lord. There's nothing that explains anything about the plan of salvation. There's nothing going into the gospel story. There's nothing even close to it, okay? Oh, I want every, like your song, On God, where you swear by God that you're the greatest artist to ever have lived. That, that's real glory. Or what about that Chick-fil-A song? That was really about the gospel, right? Number one in a lemonade, you're my Chick-fil-A. That's a stupid rhyme. I could rap better than that, and I'm as white as snow. <clears throat> Powerful words from his born-again testimony. So I looked up, like, what is Kanye West's testimony? Right? I mean, everybody's talking about it. So I searched all over the Internet for his testimony. I found a video called Born Again Testimony. Over a million views on this video from his born-again testimony. I've written down all of the most spiritual things from his testimony, the most spiritual things that were in it, okay? And most of it was just like meaningless drivel none and it's going to seem disjointed but that's that's the way he was get, it was just very disjointed here are the most here are the most spiritual things that I could pull out the most spiritual sentences you can listen to it yourself and you'll agree these are the most spiritual things he said or save yourself the trouble i've seen him work miracles in my life well that's a clear presentation of the gospel or a salvation testimony that i've ever heard Nothing beats God. And then he's like, nothing beats God. Woo! And everybody's cheering. Nothing beats God. This is born again salvation testimony. Nothing beats God. I've seen him work miracles in my life. To be radically in service to Christ is the only culture that I want to know about. 
Our Father, Christ Jesus, our Lord, thank you so much for bringing me to the home where my mommy met my daddy, where my mommy met my daddy. Thank you for saving me, for replenishing me, for delivering me. When I found out about you and got closer to you, I got closer to my children. I got closer to my family because the devil had me chasing a gold statue. The devil had me chasing cars. The devil had me chasing money. But the power of God can't be calculated by a number. It's God inside of us. It's God inside of family. It's God inside of friendships that we, that we hold each other accountable. If you see somebody slipping, you tell them. That's it. That's what I got. <laughs> what did any of that have to do with the gospel? Can somebody tell me? Oh, man, I've been saved. I've been delivered. I've been replenished. That doesn't even make sense, but okay. How do you get replenished? What does that mean? I got replenished. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, man, God worked miracles in my life. Oh, it's so spiritual. Be radically in service to Christ. Nothing about saying, hey, here's a Bible verse. So somebody explain this to me. If Kanye is just supposedly just sold out, dedicated, wanting to preach the gospel and every song, why do none of his songs talk about the gospel or teach anything? They're just a bunch of our gods and awesome God chanting type fluff garbage. Yeah. Nothing about actual doctrine or the Bible or talking about, look, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, justification by faith. This is how we're saved. This is what we have to do to be saved. When has he even gotten up and said, hey, here's how I got saved. Here's what I did in order to be saved. Or here's what salvation means to me. Here's what it means when I say that I'm saved. Just any giving Bible verses or explaining what he believes. No, nothing. You can't. I searched all day. There's nothing. This was all I could find. What I just read to you was the closest thing I could find to a salvation testimony. Not only that, but he was rebuking people for being against Mormons and Catholics because he believes that we all have the same gospel. So here's an article that I found called Kanye West defends Mormons, Catholics, and T.D. Jakes and says we all have the same gospel. So you got T.D. Jakes, the modalist, oneness, trinity-denying heretic, then you've got Mormons and Catholics. According to Kanye, we all have the same gospel. Listen to this quote, and I, I heard him say this with my own ear. I listened to the YouTube video of it. And it's going to be a whole bunch of people call me like, you ain't supposed to mention that in Sunday service stuff, but this is something God put on my heart. I got family locked up. And then it'd be pastors that want to talk about, oh, T.D. Jake said this. He ain't saved. Okay, what does he, him having family locked up have to do with pastors rebuking T.D. Jakes? The man is a lunatic. Yeah, right. He's like, oh, and by the way, did I mention I'm black and I have, you know, family locked up and, and I've been mistreated because I'm black? He just, uh, his whole lyrics in his Christian album is just talking about how he's black and that's why people won't accept him. And, and, and then listen to what he says. Here's the race baiting. He ain't saved. You know, people said, oh, T.D. Jakes said this. He ain't saved. He wasn't pure to the Bible. But then they can't tell you a black pastor that they like, though. See how he just makes it all about race? Yeah. They can't tell you a black pastor that they like, though. I like Caleb Akinosho. He's a black pastor that I like. <laughs> Not <laughs> pastor, but preacher, right? <laughs> He's preached some good sermons. You're, hey, become a black pastor that we like something. <laughs> what kind of garbage is that? I would, say, I would say Oscar Peter Bogart, but where he comes from, they don't consider him black because he's not dark enough. In America, he's black, though. And when he gets here, he'll be black. But over there, he's, con he's considered colored, it's called, in South Africa. Uh, but basically, you know, oh, yeah, but they, they just don't like T.D. Jakes because he's black. No, we don't like T.D. Jakes because he denies the Trinity right. and because he's a lying TV phony right. preacher. That's why. Right. I don't care if he's purple or orange or polka dot. <laughs> But they can't tell you a black pastor that they like, though. It's a divide in Christianity. That's what I've seen since I've been saved. I'm an early convert. I'm just on stage. I'm yay. So he's still calling himself Jesus. Ye and yay. It's, it's all show for Jesus. That's his nickname. 
I'm yay. Here's what I see. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you know the gospel. That's the gospel. No, that's not the gospel. That is not the gospel is that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, lived a perfect sinless life, died on the cross, was buried, rose again, and offers salvation freely. To, look, the whole message is the gospel. Right. You can't just isolate just, oh, you believe Jesus died on the cross? Well, that's the gospel. Okay, well then basically almost every atheist in the world, I guess, believes the gospel then. Because just about every atheist in the world believes that Jesus died on the cross. Am I right? Don't they believe it? Don't the Jews in the Talmud believe that Jesus died on the cross? Yeah, he was a criminal who was executed. Hey, as long as you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you know the gospel. That's the gospel. No, friend, there's more to the gospel than that. Okay? The gospel is about how we get saved. Not, it's about the whole message, okay? And I did a sermon a while back where I proved that from the Bible. It was called The Definition of the Gospel. A lot of people think, oh, the gospel is just the death, burial, and resurrection. That's it. No, that's the crux of the gospel, no pun intended. But guess what? The entire message of Christ's redemptive work is the gospel. So you can't just never mention anything about how to be saved and claim, well, Mormons are saved, Catholics are saved. Look, friend, Mormons and Catholics aren't saved. And you know, typically when you talk to people who say, yeah, Mormons are saved, Catholics are saved, you're talking to an unsaved person. Right. When was the last time you talked to a saved person that said Mormons are saved, Catholics are saved? Who has ever talked to somebody who's saved who said, yeah, Mormons and Catholics are saved? Th folks, that's what unsaved people say, right. where they just think everybody's saved. Right. Don't be telling me that Mormons got an extra book. Yeah, I will tell you that they have an extra book. Right. Kanye West, if you're out there, the Mormons have an extra book. Damn it. Ooh. Sorry about that, Kanye. <laughs> Don't be telling me the Mormons got an extra book and Catholics do this. It's simple. Christians be making it too hard for people to come and get involved in this. Come and get involved in what? A $225 sweatshirt? Yeah. Come and get involved in what? A $180 pair of sweatpants? Come and get involved in what? Buying your new album? Right. Now let me explain something. You, you say, well, I still think he's saved. Based on what? There's nothing that comes out of his mouth that even kind of indicates that he could possibly have actually gotten saved. Everything is trash. Everything, look, out of the abundance of the mouth, if he had Jesus in his heart and he's so dedicated in every day and every song, then wouldn't something godly come out of his mouth at some point where he'd actually explain, hey, here's what, I mean, he gathers millions of people together Right? He's got millions of people all gathered and live streaming. He's got, you, you can see him on stage with just thousands and tens of thousands of people gathered together. Millions of people live streaming and watching on YouTube. And what does he say? Does he get up and say, hey, listen, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He rose again three days later. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Does he say anything even like that? How long did that take me? 30 seconds? He gets up for 12 minutes. It's just like, Nobody beats God. Oh, our Father, dear Jesus, I just thank you for my mommy that met my daddy and my mom that met my dad and put me in a house where my mom met my dad and gave birth to me because I'm God, is basically what he's saying. I mean, the, mo the biggest thing he's thankful for is that his dad impregnated his mom because that's how he could get here. That's his testimony. Go to his testimony and he's thanking God that he was born. Because he's God's gift to the world. He's a sick person. Yeah, nice. And you know what? If you think that Kanye West is saved, you are a complete idiot. Yeah, nice. If you think that Kanye West is serving God or praising God or glorifying God or doing great things for God, you are a complete idiot. Yeah. You have no discernment. Then you know what? You might as well say the Catholics and Mormons are saved. I mean, look, there would be more of a chance of Catholics and Mormons getting to heaven than this kind of trash. Right. And we know they're not going. I mean, this is insane. But you say, well, I still think he's saved. Okay. So he's saved. Okay. This is what he should be doing. Not joining a church, not listening to anyone else, but just he's just founding his own church now. You know what the Bible says in James 3? 
It says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So if you're going to get up and set yourself up as a teacher of God's word, you better be ready to get condemned. If you're going to get up and say this kind of trash, that, ah, don't be telling me the Mormons have an extra book. You sit down and shut up. Yeah. Get up and yeah. preach it. You say, well, you're, you know, you sound mad. Look, this makes me mad Amen. to see my Savior's name drag in the mud, to see a CD come out that has an entire song just taking God's name in vain over and over again, mocking Christianity, mocking the things of God. And you know, this is no different than in 1958 when that filthy little Richard said, I'm never going to do secular music again. I'm going to preach the gospel now, right? That sodomite, little Richard, in 1958, swore off rock and roll and preached the gospel for what, what was it, three or four months before he went back to the same garbage. Because all they are is making a mockery of the things of God. They're making a mockery of Jesus Christ. They're making a mockery of our Savior. They're making merchandise of Amen. foolish people that are willing to put down $225 for a, whole, a Holy Spirit sweatshirt, okay? There is nothing that even comes remotely close to being sincere about this man. And yet Christians are just eating this up like, oh, so great. That's our guy, you know. MacArthur graduate, you know. Yay, Calvin. Yay, Tulip. <laughs> what kind of tulip is this? <laughs> and look, you may think I'm being uncouth tonight. or You know what? I'm just, is this called hard preaching? Amen. Right. Right. Read the Bible and read the prophets of God in the Bible. Hey, they screamed and yelled and used strong language, and I didn't use any word tonight that's offensive that's not in the Bible. Right. And if it offends you, it probably just applies to you. <laughs> and let me tell you something. These phony Hollywood stars, if you're looking to them for a revival to come, you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> God doesn't have any respect for these people. God, God looks down and he sees the local churches where people are showing up and singing praises to God that actually are doctrinal songs. They're not, we, don't, we didn't sing a song about Chick-fil-A in the service today. We didn't sing about lemonade. We didn't sing about how we're the greatest and, and all this stuff. You know, we, we sing songs that are actually doctrinal, righteous songs. We read the word of God an entire chapter, we preach what the Bible says, Amen. we learn doctrine, we go out and knock doors and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I guess the Calvinists, this is like their only hope of evangelism since like 99.9% .9 of them don't go soul winning. You know, finding a Calvinist that goes soul winning is like finding a pterodactyl or something. I mean, it's out there somewhere, maybe. I mean, there. look, and I've, I've seen some Calvinists go, so about less than one hundredth of a percent of them do. And then they're like, that's not true, Jonathan Edwards. Yeah, you got to go back a couple hundred years to find an example of a soul winning Calvinist, right? Folks, the reason why the Calvinists are eating this up with fork and spoon is because this is their way to get the gospel out through Conway. Am I right? I mean, it's like, I mean, are they knocking all the doors in Placerita, California? Are they knocking all the doors in Santa Clarita? I hope not, because if they do, they're telling lies since they don't even have the right salvation right. according to what that church's own statement of faith said. Right. Where, they, where, where he had a total hardcore lordship salvation. No, no, I guess their plan is just let Kanye take it from here. Go preach a sermonette at, to Brad Pitt and Justin Bieber and David Letterman over at Kanye's little exclusive elite Hollywood gathering, which is an abomination in the sight of God. Yeah. Look, any church that's for, for elite, that, does, that, that basically you have to be invited, you can't, you know, you know what I mean? Like any church that's only for the rich and famous is an abomination to God. Because God's house is supposed to be a house of prayer to all nations. Amen. God's house is supposed to be a place where we don't respect the, the rich above the poor. Right. You know, where we're all on an equal footing at the cross. So what is this abomination house of merchandise that he has? It's straight out of, you can't see his heart. I've seen enough from what comes out of his mouth. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord, warning us about these people who would make merchandise of us and they practice covetousness. And uh, Lord, 
thank you for telling us that all we have to do is just look at his words and we can see what's going to help. Lord, help this gullible, foolish nation to get right with God Amen. and to run Kanye out of town on a rail for this abomination of fake Christianity that he's pawning all of us. And Lord, we know that if anyone else had a church that looked like Kanye's, everyone would hate it and think it was a joke. But because it's Kanye, they get excited, Lord. You're not a respecter of persons, and, and Lord, help us not to respect persons. Help us to, to treat every poor person and rich person alike since you created them both, and you love them both the same, Lord. Help us, Lord, not to be deceived, and help us to please you and win souls to Christ. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.